So welcome, welcome everyone to this first session of the uh, Sunshine Courses uh, Accounting and Bookkeeping. Um, my name is Nigel Cohen. Um, I'm a chartered accountant, but uh, it's about 20 years since I last practiced accounting. So I do a little bookkeeping from time to time for various charities. And the reason we're doing this course is that during lockdown, um, I kept coming across people who are really struggling with uh, their industry having been decimated. There are people in the travel industry, the entertainment industry, the event management business, uh, and a number of people uh, were actually ending up on, uh, in poverty with, with a huge, uh, under huge stress. And the, the original motivation for this course was to see if we could help people who wanted to change their career to start in doing bookkeeping and accounting. And of course, one of the benefits of bookkeeping and accounting is it's one of these universal skills that just about every business throughout the world needs. So uh, talking of throughout the world, one thing that was quite both exciting and slightly daunting is that when we started um, uh, offering this course to people, um, it was very much at a local level, local being in the UK. And we started getting people from literally across the world um, signing up. So we've actually got people on this course signed up right the way from um, uh, America, Hawaii, Colorado, and various other places in America, right through to the other side of the world of India, um, Philippines, uh, and various countries in between. So it's quite exciting. Um, and one of the things we did a little bit of a survey of people who signed up as to what they're looking for. And we've got quite a large range of interest. So some people have no experience whatsoever with accounting or bookkeeping. And what they're looking to do is to literally start from scratch to see if this is a career for them. Right the way through to qualified accountants who are just trying to brush up on their skills. So I would say anyone who's watching this video, the chances are there'll be quite a number of other people at exactly the same level of knowledge as you've got. And we're going to try to create uh, the course, uh, the course material, so it really is suitable for everyone. So the intended outcomes of the course is that once you've done it, as a very minimum, you'll feel more comfortable about what bookkeeping and accounting is, and hopefully you'll add to your personal development, your personal skill levels, and some people who are watching this will just feel more comfortable if they've added to their personal development. So for you, we're very glad to have you along. Um, some people will be looking at this to develop a new career. And for you, we're going to do quite a lot to see if we could help you in your new career, even to the extent that once you've started to see if we can give you a little bit of support um, so that what you've learned on the course can be put into practice and just to keep that level of confidence going um, until you feel ready that you don't need any outside support again. And then for people who are already working in bookkeeping, and I know there's a number of people who are, who are already doing this, it's really to help you secure your confidence, hopefully to give you a, a slightly different perspective or understanding of bookkeeping, hopefully to give you a little bit more breadth than maybe um, looking at areas that you maybe don't deal with in your day-to-day -day level. Um, and, and hopefully that will allow you to to progress in your career. Um, so uh, what I would say is this, um, the people who are both quite experienced may get a little bit anxious that we're pre presenting this to people that have no experience whatsoever. But my experience with bookkeeping started after about four or five years of having done audits of really big companies. And what I found was I actually knew nothing of the basics of bookkeeping. And it was only when I sort of got into it and I had a really stressful period of learning how bookkeeping works. It was once I got into it, I realized quite how useful and important it was and how to implement some of the ideas and techniques in the higher level uh, interpreting of accounts and auditing. So for the people that are experienced, let me just suggest that even going back to, that going back to the basics, is helpful, not necessarily because it tells you what you don't know, but I hope because it gives you a perspective 
which will be helpful in your um, career development. Certainly when I was doing accounting, I found it hugely helpful when I finally understood how bookkeeping worked um, from beginning to end. So I'm now going to um, share my screen and apologies with technology if this doesn't quite go as expected. Um, where is it? Here we go. So, okay, so this is a, um, a course on accounting and bookkeeping. And I will say that some people uh, use the term accounting when they mean bookkeeping and vice versa. But hopefully fairly on, we'll be talking about what the difference is. Uh, one of the sort of very bold claims I'm going to make is at the end of the second session, you're going to know everything you need to know about bookkeeping. That's the hope. And then the rest of the course will all be about accounting, which is how you put that bookkeeping knowledge into practice. So, what is accounting? At its heart, accounting is all about making sense of chaos. What I mean by that is, if you're a business, and accounting of course makes sense of monetary chaos, if you're a business or an individual or a charity or any organization, you need to know how much money you've made or lost in a period. Have you made profits? Are you losing money? And partly you need to know how much money you can draw from a business. Can you take out a salary? Um, can you live off what you're doing? Um, and particularly if you're trading, um, you need to know how much money you need going forward to fund your business. So the idea of accounting is to help you understand the cash flows and there's two types of cash flows. There's cash flows which move during any accounting period. So I'll say that one more time because it might seem really obvious, but it's actually quite a big deal. It's accounting is done during a period. It might be a period of a month, three months, a year, 10 years. But what we're looking to do when we understand chaos is to know how much money has come in and gone out during a period? And what do those monetary amounts represent? Have I, do they represent sales? Do they represent debts? What do they represent? That's one of the types of cash flows. The other type of cash flow is assets or liabilities. And the assets and liabilities you have, assets might be things like um, shares in a company, uh, bank balances, um, car, uh, fixed assets, and it might be liabilities, like how much money do you owe to a bank, how much money to creditors, and the, um, the assets and liabilities are, are always at a particular point in time. So you don't talk about liabilities over a one-year period, you only ever talk about assets or liabilities at a particular point in time. So as we go progressively through this course, we'll be delving more deeply into what the different types of cash flows are. We'll be particularly looking at the cash movements and we'll be looking at the assets and liabilities because this is, is in essence what we're doing as bookkeepers and accountants is we're moving this chaotic bunch of transactions into something that's meaningful within those two frames of understanding, cash movements and assets and liabilities. So I've already talked about the types of cash flows. So I'm now, again, if technology will allow me to do it, um, I'm going to um, uh, give you an example of what a set of accounts looks like. And for people that are already accountants, hopefully this will be very obvious and very clear. Um, but for other people, um, this might be the first time you actually see this. So fingers crossed if technology is working. So has this now switched to a spreadsheet? Ah, marvelous, great. Okay, so um, a typical statement that shows cash flows is called a profit and loss account. 
And in this particular example, we have two set columns. There's a column for the current year. In this particular case, this is the 12 month period from the 1st of April, 2020 to the 31st of March, 2021. And we compare that with how we did in the previous year. So we started off with just this bunch of transactions and the end product of our accounting was to create this uh, statement, which represents one of the two types of flows, the cash flows, which in this case is a profit and loss account. And in this particular example, we have um, income, which is divided between sales and interest. So in this particular case, there's each column is sewn in thousands of pounds. So 2000, lots of thousands of pounds is 2 million. So in this particular organization, it's got sales of 2 million pounds, interest income of 52,000 pounds, which means a total income of 2.1 million pounds. Purchases, and we'll deal with this in a little bit more detail, various expenses, and the result of all of these is you've got net profit, a net surplus, more sales than cost of 252,000 pounds in the year. Quite high levels of tax, which leaves net profits after tax of 131,000 pounds. And this company has decided because it's so doing so well, it can pay a dividend of 75,000 pounds to its shareholders, which means it's retained in its business 56,000 pounds. So if you compare that with the previous year, the sales have gone up compared with last year. The profit's gone up compared with last year. The profit after tax has gone up quite a lot. And so the company has awarded quite a lot of extra dividends because it felt it could afford to do so. And even with the extra dividend, it's retained quite a lot of money in the business. So that's the statement that our accounts are aiming at when we are trying to understand our chaos. That's what we're looking to achieve. The second statement is a statement of assets and liabilities as at the day of the end of that financial period, as at the 31st of March, 2021. And in this particular company, we've got 2021 and 2020 for comparison. In 2021, Again, these are, each column is in thousands of pounds. It's got premises of 750,000 pounds. Motor vehicles of 45,000 pounds, which gives you total assets of just under 800,000 pounds. Various other assets of debtors and bank balances of another 200,000 pounds. Various liabilities of 145,000 pounds. So the net assets in the business, as at the 31st of March, as at that one day, that one point in time, is 847,000 pounds. And that represents share capital and retained profits. You'll see this figure of share capital and retained profits is the same figure as the total assets and liabilities. And we'll explain all of that in a bit of detail. But I just want to home in on one figure in particular because it's such a critical figure when we're doing bookkeeping and accounting. And that's the bank balance. So in this particular example, the bank balance as at the 31st of March is 51,000 pounds. Now, in theory, if we were to get a bank statement and we look at the bank statements for the whole of this year, there's lots of different statements. Typically, there'll be a set of statements for each month. But we'll actually get, if we go to the end of that statement as at the end of the 31st of March, on the, the day at the close of business, 51,000 pounds is what we should see on the bank balance. So this is trying to distinguish the movements of cash flows from the statement of assets and liabilities. And the statement of assets and liabilities ends up in this balance sheet, which itself is a fairly critical document to help you, help you understand how much money you've got. In this case, the company has also got a bank overdraft of 35,000 pounds, 35, pounds. If there's an upper limit to how much overdraft you can get, but you're going to need money to pay off your creditors, how much additional money you, are you going to need? This is part of the accounting process. And this is all part of interpreting what these figures mean when you've got your summary of your profit and loss account and your balance sheet. So what I hope we'll do at the end of this course 
is that you'll all feel comfortable taking a bunch of chaotic data, processing it through uh, an accounting system and creating a profit and loss account and a balance sheet. In this case, the profit and loss account that I'm showing you is formatted to comply with statutory requirements, but there's a lot of other types of um, profit and loss accounts you can show, typically for internal management accounting purposes. And again, we'll discuss the different types of things that you can do. And again, I'm hoping by the end of the course, you'll feel comfortable designing your own formats, which will suit the needs of you and the businesses that you're working with. And I know that a few people who are um, joining us to, um, in this, this course have just started their own businesses. So we may well use your business in the examples so that everyone else can see how these things have developed based on what your particular needs are, because that will help you then um, adapt to what your own needs are. And that's what the idea of this, um, I'll stop the share, didn't mean to do that, apologies. Um, that's what the idea of this course is, is about. So I'm gonna head back to the presentation. Okay. So um, we're now going to start the bookkeeping and the bookkeeping is the description we use for the mechanics of bringing these, um, sorry, I've jumped, uh, okay. Um, uh, bookkeeping is the mechanics of how we create a set of accounts. So the first thing that we have to do with accounting is we have to collate a whole series of receipts or payments. So typically you'll have an accounting period which might be a month, a quarter, a year. I'm going to look at it as a month, for example, because it's just a bit easier to conceptualize. So in a particular month, I want to look at how much uh, income have we had and how much of expenses have we had. And again, if I'm able to do the technology and apologies if I get this wrong, uh, I'm gonna go back to our spreadsheet. Um, Okay, um, typically when I talk about chaos, I've actually slightly processed this. I've just simply listed for the month of February, very advanced because we're in January when this course is being presented, um, a number of transactions that's taken place. And I've not these as being unprocessed because typically as a bookkeeper, this is what you start off with. I've given a very small number of transactions and in a small business or even in your own home accounting you might some of you might want to keep track of your own home accounts to keep track of your um, cash inflows and outflows and this is equally applicable to your home as it is to the largest corporation in the world so any processing of monetary transactions but I've given just a small number of transactions to make it a little bit easier to conceptualize what's happening and in this particular example We've got about um, a dozen, just over a dozen transactions. There's an entry which simply says Sunshine Traders on the 2nd of February, 121 pounds. Something called Rewind Limited on the 5th of February for a thousand pounds and so on. And I've just listed these transactions. Um, and typically in a, in a really, uh, in, a, in an organization that's really bad at their bookkeeping, they won't even list these for you. You'll just get a bunch of invoices or maybe a checkbook, or maybe just a, a, a loose list of things. And the first thing you'll probably want to do is to collate these in a spreadsheet. Um, uh, so the next thing, um, I don't know how to switch, I'm afraid I can't switch very easily back between the, the presentation and the uh, spreadsheet. So I'm going to just describe what the presentation next says. The next thing on the presentation um, uh, talks about categorization. So it's all very well having these um, uh, income and expenses. The first thing we want to do when we're trying to make sense of this is trying to categorize expenses that are similar to each other. So depending on the type of business you've got, the categorization might be very different. 
but I'm just going to make a few examples of categorizations that we might want. So just, are you able to see what I'm typing? No. Are you able to see the spreadsheet that I've got? You can't see the spreadsheet. Ah, okay, I'm gonna try one more time. Uh, okay, can you see the spreadsheet now? Still not. Yes, ah, uh, that's a relief. Okay, so sorry, just to repeat what I've said before and apologies for this. Um, I was listing the transaction. This is a typical list of transactions that, that is just higgledy-piggledy, doesn't mean anything. And if you look at these transactions, you can't really get a sense of what's happening. You might do stuff in your head if you know what this is all about. If you know that Sunshine Traders, that 121 pounds was, um, uh, you can see that's money coming in. Um, if that was a sale of, you know, if, if this is a, a business that's doing cleaning, um, if you went in and did some cleaning for them, you might know that that's some cleaning and you might know that Rewind Limited is also cleaning. So you might, in your head, say, well, okay, I've got a very certain amount of cleaning of businesses, of offices, and I've also got a certain amount of cleaning of homes. So in your head, you might say, well, okay, I've got about 12, 1,300 pounds, 1,400 pounds worth of income, and I know that's all cleaning. What have I spent money on? And you might do this in your head. So I'm just going to list out some categories. Can you see this, um, my cursor moving? Okay, thank you. Um, so I might set out a few categories, and one of the categories for my income categories might be cleaning businesses. And another one might be cleaning home. So those might be some categories that I might find quite useful to know. And similarly on my expenses, um, I might need to know how much of my cleaning materials cost. That would be quite useful to know. It might be I need to know how much my rent is. Um, it might be I need to know how much I spend on traveling, how much did I spend getting from one place to another. And it might be I need to know, I don't know, how much interest I'm paying to a bank. So it would very much depend on what your type of business is and what you need to know. Um, but these are the categories, these, these are the categories um, that you might want to, to describe. I'm just going to come back if I can um, come back to the presentation. Okay, so am I back to the presentation? Can you now see it? You can't see a slideshow. What yeah, about now? Can you? Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, I, sorry, technical things. I've now just worked out how you get from one to the other. Um, so um, we've looked at the collating receipts in bookkeeping and we've looked at accounting categories. Um, and you can see in this, uh, um, in the chart, um, that in this particular business, there's some certain amount of money spent on rent, some on utilities, some on travel. What I wanted to illustrate is there's several ways of presenting the data. Now, for some people, the numbers are much more meaningful, and some people, graphics are much more meaningful. This is all part of bookkeeping. It's how do you collate information and how do you categorize them? And the bookkeeping is, and this is now we're actually going to start doing a bit of bookkeeping, is how do you go about mechanically doing that process? So again, just bear with me whilst I switch. Back to the process. So uh, can you see the spreadsheet again? Lovely, okay. So this is what's known as spreadsheet accounting. And the bookkeeping that we're doing or the accounting is gonna be done on a spreadsheet. And for very small businesses, this actually might be the best way to do accounting, not least because it's so easy for you and your clients to understand. And if you're running your own business, it's a very easy way of, of doing this. And the way you would categorize this, one of the easiest ways to do it, is to create a separate column for each of these categories that you're trying to identify. So I'm going to create a category here from on my income, which I'm going to call cleaning, uh, um, business, uh, 
businesses. Because I'm a cleaning business, I don't need to say cleaning business. And residential is the other one. And what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to allocate each of these uh, income to the respective columns. So in Sunshine Traders, this is a limited company. This is a, a trading company. So I'm going to um, allocate this income to the business column. Rewind Limited is another company, so I'm going to do the same here. But Harbour Consultants might be a residential place, so I'm going to put the income in this column. And if I go through all the rest of the income, so there's everything that's got a plus, I'm going to go through and all allocate them. Um, I now, if I now get the totals, I'm going to add up the total of my all my income and expenses. And then this month I spent a net spent of £730. My income to businesses is £1,120. My income to businesses is £210. So my total income, if I add them together, I don't know if you can see at the bottom of this screen, is £1,331, which is if you add these two columns together. If I now go through my expenses, I'm going to slightly speed up and I'm going to have an expense of, say, rent, uh, sorry, cleaning materials, rent, and I'm just going to say other because I just want to speed this up a little bit. But with my materials, um, Frank Properties might be my rent. Um, I'll be win, I'll be win, wind made is my cleaning materials and everything else is other. So if I now total these up as well, I've now spent 860 pounds on materials. I spent 225 pounds on rent. I spent 983 pounds, actually I'm gonna just switch this one because this is probably a, this will be a, bit more, a bit more meaningful. I spent 1,400 pounds on materials, 220 pounds on rent, 360 pounds on other, of which 220 pounds is insurance. And all of a sudden, I've now got some much more meaningful information than when we first started. When we first started, all we saw were these list of transactions, but within five minutes, I've now got a very simple way of identifying what my income is and what my expenses are. So we've now done our first uh, spreadsheet accounts. Um, and I think we're gonna stop at this point because we've done just about what I want to cover in today's session. So I'm gonna stop the sharing. So, um, so what I just wanted to illustrate was that for a very simple, in a very simple way, We've processed quite a lot of higgledy-piggledy bits of information, although in order to do so, we needed to know what each of those transactions were. So sometimes when we're bookkeeping, we have to do this with the people we're, for whom we're bookkeeping so they can explain what the transactions are so that we can start to allocate them in some sort of meaningful way. But that process I went through, although there were just a dozen transactions, works just as well if there's 100 transactions and it works just as well if there's 10,000 transactions. Although the more transactions there are, the more prone to error it is. It's too easy to make mistakes. So what we've covered in this session is the very, very basics of how we do basic spreadsheet accounting. And I will just say for anybody that's never done bookkeeping beforehand, if you simply follow what we've done now, you are already equipped to do the basics of spreadsheet accounting. So I hope you feel proud that you've already got some skill that will be useful. And for people that have seen this before and know all about bookkeeping, you may think that this is a bit trivial and a bit simple, but for reasons I hope will become clearer as we go a bit further down. I will just say as a, as a qualified accountant, I think this perspective is something you need to keep coming back to because it's so easy when you're dealing with larger and larger numbers of transactions to miss the basics of how easy accounting is. 
how easy it is to get right and how easy is it, it is to get wrong if you put some figures in the wrong columns. So this is uh, sort of the basics of accounting. So with that, I'll say goodbye. The session that we do next time will start to deal with computer accounting and double entry bookkeeping. And I hope by the end of next week's session, you're gonna have everything you need to know to do everything to do with bookkeeping, which will then lead us into the following sessions, which will talk all about accounting, which start to get more interesting in a whole series of different ways. Um, but thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>